Hello, hello. Is this thing on? This is a public announcement to let you know that this video is sponsored by Razer and NVIDIA Studio. I hope you have a fantastic day in your current air car and be sure to check out the new model RZ09-0483 if you're looking to accelerate your creativity beyond existing boundaries. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Razer have teamed up with NVIDIA Studio to get word out about the highly rated Razer Blade 16, an NVIDIA Studio Creator laptop which is now also available in the sleek new Mercury Edition color. While it's technically a gaming laptop, and I certainly enjoy playing buttery smooth games at 240Hz on it, it's also a really powerful laptop for serious creators or people like myself who just love to tinker with video editing, visual effects and 3D. Before we get into the details though, as well as a visual effects breakdown of the intro of this video, I do want to give a quick call out and a massive thanks to Razer and NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video. They sent me this laptop to try out and talk about and then to love and keep, which is very much what I'm intending to do. The model I have here comes equipped with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 laptop GPU that has 12 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, an Intel Core i9-3950HX CPU running at a max frequency of 5.5 gigahertz. It has 24 cores and 32 threads. And the laptop is equipped with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. The laptop features the world's first dual mode mini LED display, which is also one of the features that makes it so useful to both gamers as well as content creators. The display can switch between two native resolutions, UHD+, which is 3840 by 2400 pixels at 120 hertz, which is what I'm on most of the time, and Full HD Plus at 240 hertz, which makes for a really nice gaming experience. The laptop weighs in at 5.4 pounds or 2.45 kilos, plus another 1.8 pounds or 840 grams for the power brick, which doesn't make it particularly lightweight or airy, but it's still pretty portable, especially given the amount of graphics power that has been stuffed into it. Now, Razer laptops do come at a premium price, but I believe that at least as far as this particular model go, from what I've seen, you are actually getting premium. The specs are top of the line, it's packaged in a really nicely built solid body and nothing about this feels cheap or flimsy. While I do miss the numpad, the keyboard itself is really nice to use. It's got big keys for my fat fingers and the trackpad is huge. There's also a ton of ports on this laptop, a Thunderbolt 4 port, one USB-C 3.2 port that you can also use to charge the laptop but only up to 100 watts, three USB-A ports, an HDMI output and, thank you Razer, an SD card reader that allows me to load all of my footage onto the device without having to hug the USB dongle kraken. I've been using this laptop for a little while now and I decided to throw it into the deep end, metaphorically speaking, to see how far I could push it. I've created the intro sequence to this video using this device, which included 4K video editing in Premiere Pro, 3D camera tracking in Blender, bringing all of that into Unreal Engine, building and rendering out that cyberpunk city movie sequence in Unreal Engine, and then bringing all of that into After Effects to composite everything back together in 4K. I've got a visual effects breakdown coming up in this video a little bit later in case you want to know all of the dirty details, but from what I've seen so far, the laptop has been holding up really well. I've been really impressed with the power of the NVIDIA RTX 4080 graphics card, especially when working in Unreal Engine, which is very graphically intense and demanding. I think this has been buttery smooth and no problem at all. I've also noticed some pretty significant performance improvement using the Intel iCore 3950HX processor. Compiling shaders in Unreal Engine used to take 30 minutes. It's down to five minutes now. Exporting videos, even in 4K, is really fast now. And do note that you can actually really easily overclock the CPU using Razer Synapse if you want to squeeze even more power out of it. The processor also really helped speed up my workflow in Adobe After Effects with 24 cores to optimize the multi-frame rendering feature in Adobe After Effects, and then a pretty high base clock to you know, handle all of Adobe After Effects' more single-threaded functions. After Effects also contains a large number of GPU-accelerated effects, and I do use a lot of GPU-accelerated third-party plugins, and I did notice a pretty significant performance improvement due to the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 that is in this device, to the point where, for the first time ever, it wasn't a huge pain to work in 4K in Adobe After Effects. The display itself is absolutely fantastic. It's super sharp, it's bright, it's high contrast, and very important for any creator, it's highly color accurate. It delivers 100% of the sRGB color spectrum and 100% of the Display 3 color gamut, which contains even more colors. Besides some fan noise and a little bit of lap warming action during heavy exports or gaming, I haven't really had any issues with this laptop. I might just bump the RAM up to 64 gigabytes and install another SSD for all of my stock footage, but 
Fortunately, because nothing sold it down, it's actually a pretty easy task to do and Razer does support you upgrading your device. But do note that the warranty doesn't cover stuff like you breaking things in the process. But I'll link you all of the official pages down below, so just make sure that you're across all of the details. If you want to find out more about the Razer Blade 16, I'm going to drop you some links down below the video description that you can go and check out if you're interested. Now, before we jump into the visual effects breakdown, I quickly want to talk about NVIDIA Studio and why, as a creator, I think it's really worth knowing about. I've been using NVIDIA graphics cards for probably about two decades now, and I genuinely think that NVIDIA has simply done a much better job than its competitors to connect to and integrate with companies that make creative apps. The Adobe Creative Suite, Unreal Engine, Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, over 110 creative apps simply run faster on NVIDIA GPUs because they can leverage CUDA and RTX technologies to process workloads faster and work more efficiently. NVIDIA also releases a special set of drivers for the GPUs called Studio Drivers. These drivers are focused on ensuring optimal performance of your NVIDIA hardware with these creative applications. On top of that, NVIDIA creates software such as NVIDIA Omniverse, NVIDIA Canvas, or the one that I personally like to use, NVIDIA Broadcast, which all leverage NVIDIA hardware to help you with your creative workflow. Now, coming back to where we started, NVIDIA Studio is the platform that enables this ecosystem, including the hardware, the drivers, and the creative applications. Devices that are capable of utilizing this platform because they meet the necessarily NVIDIA hardware requirements, such as this Razer Blade 16, can get certified by NVIDIA as NVIDIA Studio Creator Laptop or Desktop. For more information on NVIDIA Studio, including their hardware, the drivers, and their software, I'm going to drop you some links down below that you can go and check out. But that's enough about all of that. Let's do a quick visual effects breakdown of how I put together the intro for this video. In order to create the visual effect for the beginning of this video, where the camera is essentially crossing the boundary from the real world into the virtual world of Unreal Engine and then back out, the first thing I had to do is actually film the shot. For that, I used a gimbal and a camera to have a bit of a camera movement around the laptop. And I was focused on getting different angles of the laptop, so it would be very obvious that you're kind of looking through the computer screen into that virtual world. Now, in order for this effect to work, you actually have to match the camera movement of the real world to the camera in the 3D world so that as you're rotating your head around in the real world, you're essentially looking through the laptop screen and the camera also adjusts that point of view. Otherwise, the whole effect just won't work. For that, I took the footage into Blender to do some 3D camera tracking on the shot. Then from Blender, I exported the camera animation as an animated FXB. Next, I had to set up that cyberpunk city scene in Unreal Engine. Now, I'm not much of a 3D artist, so I went to the Epic Markets place and found a pack, this high city cyberpunk pack that I really liked the look of. And so I downloaded that pack, loaded it into Unreal Engine, customized it a little bit, added a bit of fog, a bit more atmosphere, adjusted the lighting to kind of meet the needs of the shots that I was looking for. I then set up a number of level sequences as well as a master sequence in Unreal Engine that contained the actual cinematic movie sequences, as well as one really long shot that I would use to match up with the 3D camera movement on the laptop to then transition into. To make that happen, I imported this FXB data that I've exported and tracked in Blender into Unreal Engine and applied it to my camera. So now the camera movement in Unreal Engine matched the one of my real world shot of the laptop. I then rendered this whole sequence out from Unreal Engine and took everything into Adobe After Effects for the final composite. Inside of Adobe After Effects, I first checked the screen using Mocha Pro, which is also GPU accelerated and benefits from having a powerful graphics card in your laptop. That then allowed me to cut out the screen of my real life shot and display the actual footage from Unreal Engine. And then I added some scan lines to make it feel a bit more digital, some distortion, some chromatic aberration, and a little bit of bulging to kind of make that transition feel like you're actually passing through the screen into the 3D world. For the zoom out of the laptop, I essentially used the exact same technique. The only thing I added was I wanted to kind of have a some of the cars float over and outside of the screen to kind of connect the real world and the virtual world a little bit better. For that, I used a depth pass rendered out of Unreal Engine to essentially extract and separate out the cars in that footage. So I was able to kind of overlay them on top of the real footage and it looks like they're flying into the screen and then becoming part of the 3D world just to kind of make the final effect look just a little bit more interesting. And that's all there is to it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to support me. All comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.